Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. So, we're gonna bring you along with us today. We're working on a little project that me and Andy have been living here for 10 years and we've been meaning to do this for 10 years. We have this old pack house. It needs some work done to it, but it's got a lot of room on the inside, but the inside is full. So we have got us a roll off dumpster up here and we are finally, finally gonna clean this thing out so maybe we can put it to good use and Andy can get the floor fixed and everything, which I'll show you what I'm talking about once we go in there. But for those of you that may not know, we live in Andy's grandpa's old place and Andy's grandpa did build this uh, pack house. They used to pack back in here years ago. There's actually still some canned food in the dirt basement that I just can't bring myself to get rid of um, that his grandma canned in the 90s and maybe I can show y'all that sometime today too but anyways we're gonna get to work I'm excited to see what we find and what it looks like it's just no telling so this is your before so a lot of this stuff is not ours some of it is but you know, this was kind of the catch-all in Andy's grandpa's older years. And there's a lot of antique stuff in here I think we may find. And so we'll see. But I'm going to show y'all real quick what I was talking about the floor. Um, it looks worse on the inside than what it actually is. I don't know if you can even tell. The video is not showing it very well. But this table is like leaning because there's a part in the floor that has broke under there. But it's still, I mean, okay to walk on. But... Yeah, we're going to get this junk out of here. There's no gold. We don't know what we're going to get into in here. We've actually cleaned out a lot, didn't we? Mm -hmm. This past weekend, we actually done a lot. So what you see right now, even though it's still a huge mess, you can actually walk around in here now before you couldn't. Um, all I know is I'm extremely excited to see what all's in here. A lot of the stuff is grandpa's old stuff some of the stuff in here is our stuff that we've just thrown in here and kind of i guess you say neglected to put away where it should be and we just throwed it in here um and then this back corner back here is a lot of material we had left over out of the house when we uh done some work to it I don't know, we, were, right there? we were working on it probably right there i don't know what 12 13 years ago because mm -hmm. before we got married right so Yep. I mean, there's probably horseshoes all in here. Yeah, because they used to ride horses. Yeah, Grandpa had horses. What? Um, what? What? So, I know everything in that back corner is getting thrown away. Because I was told, make sure you hang on to all that stuff. You'll need it one day. You'll need it one day. Well, guess what? We ain't needed it in 12 years. It's going away. <laughs> What's that doing in here? So, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can get into. Yeah. got down to the middle section of the building here and this table has been sitting in the way forever as long as i can remember like since i was jacob's age this table has been sitting right here um so it had stuff piled on top of yeah, it yeah so we ain't never piled up this high we ain't never been able to look at it so we've uh got down to it now i'm gonna pull the tablecloth off we just really want to see if the table is worth keeping or not or if we should throw it something we should throw away We'll pull the table off and the cloth off. I don't know what this table was. If this is something we had in the house at some point in time, and, or if this is just a table Grandpa had out here for. You can go throw that away. Okay. Close, keep, hey, keep it closed because it's got loose right there. Or if this is just something Grandpa had out here to uh, to just use as a work table. I think at one time that tablecloth was like made to it. Huh. That's interesting. That's newspaper. Right? Newspaper right here. You can go throw that away, David. Is there a date on it? I don't know. Look at that. 
I wonder why they had newspaper stuck under the tablecloth. I don't know, unless it was to keep it from sticking. Well, the newspaper stuck. I'm looking for a date. There's some kind of something at a bookstore for three dollars. So I've been reading here, and I've, there's some interesting columns in this uh, newspaper. There's one column right here called Ragweeds and Cuckleburrs. It don't talk anything about ragweeds and cuckleburrs. It's just a honestly, I don't even know what it's talking about. But then right here is something I found very interesting. It says Stop Hitler, and then it, the, um, I wonder if sometimes if Hitler didn't start this war in the year when he thought. The United States was having an election when our people would be pulling in every direction. I certainly did. I certainly will be glad when the November election is over. Then maybe our lawmakers in Washington can do something to stop Hitler. So how long ago was Hitler? Been a while. That's been a while. <laughs> so apparently Hitler was alive when this newspaper was coming yeah. out anyway. That is crazy. That is old. I almost, I don't even want to take that off of that, that table. I know. I just think cause it's cool. that. That is crazy. But I do think this table is probably worth keeping. Yeah, this looks it well It looks like made. a pretty solid table. Yeah. Look right here, y'all. Right now at this moment, if any of y'all know, let me get these out of the way so you can see it. If any of y'all know, what this is, leave it in the comments. I'll give you one hint. What'd you do with that tobacco stick, Jacob? You know. So I'm gonna give y'all one hint as to what this is. And if you think you know, or you do know, leave it down in the comments. But this is the box stick and you would lay it in just like that right there and use it for something with tobacco. Y'all tell me if you know what it was or not. I think I know. And if we remember at the end of the video, we'll tell you what it was. So another thing that I found in here, which I knew this was in here, I just kind of had it sitting in the back, was this toolbox, this, and then there's another box right here. My grandpa was never a very organized man, as you can tell by the building here. But um, he never spent a lot of money on anything either. But all through the years of him farming, these were the toolboxes that sit in the back of his truck. And I've got out most of the good tools and actually put those up and actually still use some of them. But most of this is just pretty much how he left it. And I've just uh, left it that way too. The cook, I want to show you. Um, there's a hitch pin in here. You see that hitch pin? It's supposed to be the same diameter all the way down. But that thing has pulled many of the bike trailers through its time. But that's what all these are. All these were hitch pins that he used for the bike trailers and then there's tools in here. I don't know why that pipe wrench rusted up as bad as it did. But my grandpa was the kind of person who had a monkey wrench, a hammer, a pipe wrench, a pair of pliers, and a screwdriver and would literally fix anything on his farm with that. It didn't matter what it was. There was so much stuff duct taped. I mean, he would just he would get by with it, and that would be the end of it. Like, he never once fixed anything, what I would say, right at all. He just fixed it to get by and kept trucking. But, um, anyways, I think I'm going to leave these just like this. We'll set them to the side somewhere. I was actually aiming to clean them out and just go through them, but I think I'm going to leave them just like they are. Leave them sitting to the side somewhere. So this box right here, the bottoms actually fell out of it. But um, I'm sure some of our viewers know what those right there was used for. And I'd have to say they, these are tobacco pegs, and that's what people would go through if it was too wet to plant tobacco with a setter. Go through and peg this in, or either walk behind the tobacco planter. And if a plant got missed, you would peg it in and replant it with that. But here's another situation. Like, I guarantee you that bolt right there, the reason it's got a washer on it like that, he used that for a hitch pin. I've seen the man pull tobacco trailers with a screwdriver stuck in a hitch pin. It didn't matter. Um, like I said, anything to get him by. But, um, I don't know. It's just fun to look through all this stuff. 
because it sort of brings back memories of a long, long time ago. And when they weren't in the back of his truck, so this door right here opens up to the outside. He used to leave them sitting right at the door. So all he had to do was uh, open the door up and right there said his tools. He didn't, you couldn't walk in from this door because actually on the outside of this door, it's a pretty steep, it's a pretty far down drop off. So you can't just step in. So that door stayed open all the time and his tools sit right there where he could reach them from the outside of the building. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to share that little quick snippet of all this stuff with y'all too while we're working on it. Now that we've cleaned out a little bit, I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up on the camera or not, but this is the swag in the floor Megan's talking about. So right? Yeah, you can't, in can't here. really tell. Okay, yeah. Well, right in here, I'm actually standing, I'm gonna say a good six or eight inches lower than on the outside corners, ain't it? If mm -hmm. not farther than that. Yeah. But right in here, underneath, this thing's got a dirt floor basement under it. So you can walk right up under. And several years ago, like, I mean, a long, long time ago, it had a, some bad termite damage and the floor started to fall. Well, right now it's braced up, like it's not going anywhere. But um, that's one of the main reasons we want to get this building cleaned out is because we've got a beam that's laying underneath this floor right here that we're going to try to jack everything back up with. But we got to get the mess cleaned out of it first. But we found some pretty cool items here a lot of it we knew was in here like all these old uh horse-drawn plow parts we found a good screen we'll be able to turn that into some type of drying rack several more screens back here we've actually got this corner i know it still looks pretty nasty but it's actually cleaned out a lot this is the first time i think in my life i can ever remember this corner being cleaned out and this old drink cooler back here, which this thing's probably gonna go to the scrap yard. But uh, yeah, it's it dark. There. Anyways, I guess it was a drink cooler that or a uh, ice cream cooler or something, but I'm sure it come out of an old store. But I do know that thing's been sitting there a very long time. That's been sitting there since I was a kid. So there's no telling how long before that. We we're just trying to figure out how this drink cooler got in here because I haven't measured it yet, but just eyeballing it, it looks like it's way too wide to go through that door right there. And it's too wide to go through the side door over here. So um, I'm gonna have to ask my mama about that one to see if she knows. But that's in, and this thing feels heavy. But um, I already knew this was in here though, but you can show them this old box of pop bottles there. Back in the day, everybody kept their pop bottles. You know, you used to go turn them into the store and get a refund on them. But there's those. Then these are all cannon jars that somebody actually gave us a while back. These are cannon jars, I guess, that Grandma had. And they, every one of those boxes is actually full of cannon jars. And then here is an old hickory knife. Y'all have heard us talk about old hickory knives before. And this one is one of those that's supposed to have the big flat blade on it. So you can tell that thing's been sharpened a time or two. Reckon it got let war out scraping hog hair or if you think it was doing something I else. Know. I wonder what he done with it. But man, that thing, she's been sharpened a lot. Like I said, that blade, that's one of the ones that's got the thick butcher blade on it. And it's supposed to be that thick. So it's been shaved a lot. I mean, it's been uh, sharpened a lot. And these little things here kind of brought back a little bit of memories. I don't know if Grandpa was telling me the truth or not, but he said he remembered getting his hair cut with these right here. And what it is, it's like a, it works like a, like a electric shaver does now. And it would, you know, your hair would go up in there and it would cut your hair. And he said he remembered doing them cutting his hair with these and it felt like he was ripping his hair out when they cut them. I don't know whether he was telling me the truth. I'm sure he probably was because, gosh, he was a little boy a long time ago. What, when was he born? When, in 1922? Something like Or 21? would have been over 100. Mm -hmm. So he probably, he's probably right. Like, they probably did use on, those on his hair. But, and we found a ton of typewriters. We're still chugging away. I think we're going to go take us a lunch break right now, though, and get back at it after lunch. Well, y'all, we're making some headway. So looking at the building, 
It may not much look like it to y'all, but Andy in his 30 some years of being alive has never seen this area back here cleaned out. There's an old <coughs> door right here. Let me show you where this was an old tobacco pack house. <coughs> this door, you can tell the dust is getting yeah, dusty. <laughs> um, this is a door right here that leads down to the dirt basement. And that's where they used to hand the tobacco down. Andy has never seen that door. <laughs> I, I knew it was here, knew it was back here, but I've never I've seen it from the beneath side. Yeah, so but I've never seen it from the up top side. So we're getting there slowly but surely. I really wish we could get this cooler out of here. I don't know how many people it would take to move it. I don't either. I wish it was gone. I don't want it. Hey, how many of y'all remember these? Probably ain't gonna be able to read them. And inside that bottle cap says, please try again. This one says something about South Carolina. I'm sure it was something to do with some type of game they had going on. But I kind of forgot they'd done this back in the days. Now everything, you know, you, what, don't you scan codes on That's the drinks now yeah. for the games they play? Well, I kind of missed the days when it was underneath the bottle head. And, and you always looked anyway. Yeah, you took a, <laughs> you win a free drink or, I think I actually won $20 on one one time under a bottle head. But well, we're going to keep on and keeping on. Yep. I guess we're going to move this stuff back here now, ain't we? Yeah, for now. Anyway. All right. day two of us cleaned out the building and we're coming along at least you can see the floor <laughs> yeah it doesn't look like we've done a lot but really what we've been doing is throwing away junk and moving the good stuff around yeah till we can get it organized um but before I don't know how well the video showed it, but you couldn't see the floor. So no. there's the floor. <laughs> so I bet if you stand back here now, it may pick up how swag that floor is. I don't know, it still may not. Yeah, you really can't Just tell. right behind where Maggie's sta standing is a really low spot. So we're gonna go in there and look because we're thinking something else may be broke that we didn't know. Yeah, because the original, I knew there was a low spot here. But I didn't think it was as bad as it was. The, the underneath, uh, right about in here, is where I was thinking the the broken part of the cross members are. So we're gonna go under there and just check it out, but we'll show y'all what kind of mess we've got to fix. So this is on the back side of that building. It used to be a door there, but yeah, the door is about fell. Come on in. It's very dark down here, so. Very steep, yeah. right there. But I don't know how good y'all will be able to see. I'll try to get out my flashlight. Yeah, oh, right there's a light bulb. Where's the, it doesn't work anymore. No. <laughs> All right, so. So the part we were just looking at, I bet is right there. I see it now. 
See that broken beam? Yeah. Can you? Does your camera pick it up? Look at it. Wait. Get on this side of it. I see Is it. Is that right part there. of the floor is missing? Yeah, there's a little hole right there. So it would be all of this right here is where that whole spot was. But you can see, I mean, it's still got this section here is what's supporting it. And uh, then we got, this is the other bad broke spot. This is the main beam that was built to hold the floor joist up. And then they broke off of that nail there and made the whole floor come down just a little bit. Well, then since then, this has been kind of patched back up so it can't really fall anymore. But still, we got other issues right here is where it rotted out or either termites one got in it. I really can't remember. Y'all, like I said, this has been this way since I was Jacob's age. Like a very, very, very long time. And right there is the other bad spot. That spot over there actually looks really bad. But that spot over there is level. That may have done been fixed before. What are y'all doing? I think it is. I think that's why those boards are patched back. Over here, this is what I was telling y'all about at the beginning of the video. This is some of, some of Andy's grandma's canned food um, from back when she was living. And I just think it is so cool and I can't bring myself throw it away. That looks like pickles. You used to get see the date on top of them jars. It said 94. Was it 94? Mm -hmm. And see her pretty canned squash. This is where she kept her canned food because she had a hard time going down in the basement in her older years, in the basement of the house. Yeah, it's not that bad to get in here. Or it didn't used to be. Yeah, it didn't yeah. used to be. But I just think it's so crazy, just like that, that squash. Like, the squash is still pretty and yellow. I don't know. just think that's super cool. And right here is a can of tomatoes. That was his grandma's. Look how pretty and red they still are. Probably still eat that. Tiger, Probably so. Tiger. I guess grandpa at some time put this post in. And then he's got some boards laying across there. So that's actually holding that floor up. It's, it's all the weights on that post right there. Don't push that post. The more you look at it, the worse you realize just how bad this thing is. It's sad, too, because the whole structure of the building, the foundation, the walls, the roof does, it needs some new tin on the roof because we noticed today that it was leaking pretty good. But um, everything is in pretty good shape except for the floor. The floor is terrible. Without a floor, a building is no good. <laughs> but um, you end up you, down here in this hole. If it, has, well, if it has a basement, you'll just have a really high ceiling. Yep. <laughs> At one point, we considered tearing the building down. And I just got so many memories of Grandpa in this building that I really just decided I didn't want to. I was like, I think I can fix it. And I still think I can fix it. But it may be, after coming back down here now and looking, looking a little more detailed, it may be a bigger challenge to fix the floor than I thought it was going to be. But I still think we can fix it. But what I'm thinking is... I'll either cut some beams or either I'll use something I've already got milled up and we'll put all new boards all the way across. And then I've got this, I've got this beam right here that I put in here a while back when I started this project and never got around to finishing. And I'm going to put those boards across the top of that beam and then jack that beam up all at once and try to get all of this floor to kind of raise up at one time as I jack. Cause I've got the other end of this beam already supported and I think it's where it needs to be. I may have to do some adjusting on that. I think we'll get it. It's just gonna take some time, but at least we're working on it. We've got started on it finally. After 10 years, we've got started on it.
Well, y'all, after three long days, we can finally say we're pretty much finished. So I'm gonna give you a little look around. This is coming from the front door, kind of like we showed you when we first started. So things need to be organized. They really do, but we'll get to that. We just, our main goal was to get everything cleaned out and uh, in that dumpster before it was time for it to hit the road. So we'll work on organizing this later. But we found a few cool things we thought we'd show you before we end this video today. Of course, cleaning out old buildings like this, you just never know what you're gonna find. So we'll show, them what, we'll show you what we found. We found that old fire extinguisher, which I thought was pretty cool. It says, firefighter is the label on it. Well, look how it's spelled. I, I guess that was the brand name of it. But I thought that was pretty cool, so I'm gonna hang on to that. So, found this jar. This is a brand that I had never heard of. It says Tropical Canners. So, if that's something y'all have heard of, let us know in the comments. Um, you know, I think old jars are super cool, and this is a half gallon Tropical Canners jar. So, like I said, that's one that I've never in my life ever heard of. So, I'm gonna look that up. Um, we found a few other cool things. We found three of these old hickory knives. Now they've... They've been sharpened plenty of times. They've been used, I believe, a few times. And so we think those are super cool. You know, this was Andy's grandpa's stuff, so a lot of it holds a lot of sentimental value, too. This right here, I think it's for cutting out pie crusts. I really don't... I'm not 100% sure, so y'all let us know, too. Uh, if you know what this little thingy is, I thought it was cool. It says something. What does it say? Raw sprit something. It don't, it don't help me out any. <laughs> but, yeah, I thought that little thing was cool. And then we found these tobacco seed containers. We got a lot of those. Yeah, we found a lot of these. Um, Andy's grandpa was a big tobacco farmer. And, um... This one's in line. I guess the seeds came in a little barn. Thought yeah. that was cute. Does this one have a date on it? That one, I think, is the one that had 94 on it. Is it? That was one of the newest ones we found. Um, but these metal ones, these little metal containers, they don't have a date on them. So we don't really know uh, what year these may be from, but we found a bunch of these. And we actually found a container that still had tobacco seeds in it. So if we find a little extra place, maybe this spring, maybe we can stick us a few seeds and just... That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? See if they come up. <laughs> you never know. I mean, they've been in here pretty much dry. In the dry, in yeah. In the container. So my grandpa was the kind of person who didn't throw away anything, obviously, from the looks of this building. But he also made do with what he had. He never, honestly, I don't ever remember him ever going to the store and buying something. He made it with whatever he had. <laughs> and so this right here is... Uh, is like a fence gate, you know, like the spring gates. Um, this one don't have no spring in it, but that's what he used it for. He would just use the tension of the wire to kind of hold it tight. So that would be your hook you would hook on the fence post end. And then this right here was the hook the wire was wrapped around. And then he's got what looks like two layers of plastic pipe around it. And then some electrical tape wrapped around the ends to hold it, to hold it shut. But I thought that was interesting. A matter of fact, I kind of think I remember him using this particular one. And then he might have actually replaced it with a normal one later on. But, you know, it's it's interesting because you don't see people do that anymore. You just go to the store and buy whatever you need. And you don't even... I don't think people even have the creativity to make stuff like that anymore. Like, who would have ever thought of that? But he did. But, um... Then also back here, we did come across, which we threw away several TVs, but we come across this one and don't ask me why y'all. I know it's no, not worth money or whatever or anything like that, but I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away because, you know, it's got the old turn dials on it, which they're locked up. That one ain't. And, you know, that goes back to a time when you actually had to get up to turn the TV. You couldn't just mash a remote and you only had a select few channels you could actually pick up. So 
it's not that big. It don't take up that much room. I thought I'd just save it because, you know, nowadays most of that stuff's been thrown away. And so when Jacob gets older and Maggie gets older and then their kids, their, their kids are liable to have never even seen one of these things. So here we are. We can go back and at least nothing else tell them about the days when you actually had to get up and change the channels on the TV without a remote. Um, then this is a hand crank sausage grinder, which I knew this was in here, but I thought we would show it to you. I couldn't imagine grinding sausage with this thing. Like, I would hate to know I had to grind grind over a couple pounds with it. <laughs> but it's so little, and the throat of this thing is so small. Which I guess, you know, it's better than not having nothing to grind it with, but still, you know, things have really changed a lot in the last several years. And let's see. I'm not sure how this one would have mounted to something, but usually these are mounted on a stand or something like that. And that's just to, to slide your shoe over top of so you can work on it. And I think back in the old days, that was pretty common for everybody to have a shoe horn because you would fix your own shoes. You didn't go buy a new pair. You fixed your own. And then... uh found a few old typewriters. You can see the yeah. kids wanted to stick a piece of paper in it, but it's kind of locked up, so. <laughs> yeah, the other two are kind of, you know, they're in like a suitcase type thing. I don't even know where they're at. They're back there. But okay. we can't get them open. They're stuck, so we have to work with that to get them open. But um, then we got a bunch of screens. So those are going to be some future drying racks. Um, matter of fact, the funny thing is we were looking for some screens wanting to get some to make drying racks with, and lo and behold, there's a pile of, a pile of them that's <laughs> been in here the whole time. And what's crazy to me about these screens is these ones that are cased in black, I guess because if they're wooden, they must have come out when they remodeled this house, what, in the 60s? I don't know when they come from. Um, I but, thought they went over the old windows that was in it before we put the new windows in because they were wooden too. Those were wooden oh, frame were windows. They? Yeah, and I bet those went over top of those windows. Um, but those are really heavy. They uh, are. I mean, they're actually like, it's very, uh, you really can't tell by looking at them, but when you pick them up, they're heavy. <laughs> they are a lot heavier than the old aluminum style screens. So I guess we'll go back over here. And if you're still hanging around to this point, oh yeah, there's one other thing before we go over there we want to show you. Now these aren't in that great shape, but we found a bunch of these right here, which is what when you was working with horses, let's see, this would have been hooked to your horse, pulling from like a chain going to your horse. This part right here would have been put to your plow or your slide or your buggy or whatever it was you were pulling with your horse. And uh, so, you know, like I said, these aren't in the greatest of shape, but we thought we would hang on to those just because that's, well, there you go. <laughs> it slid off the end. Anyways, as I was saying, they're not in the greatest of shape, but that's also a piece of history that um, is will, gone. will soon be forgotten. So we wanted to hang on to them. Something I thought was cool about these, I was looking at them. You can tell, look how wore out this one is. Oh yeah, that's pulled a lot. Yeah, it? that one's really wore out. Overlook all the chainsaws down there. Megan says I have a problem. <laughs> Those are mine. <laughs> but, um, let's see. I guess, other than this stand here, I guess that's about all it was worth mentioning. And now these jars and everything back here, now these were given to us with the sargum uh, set up to put that in. So that wasn't something we found. We just put those in here. So, this stand right here, if you're actually still hanging around to this point of the video, um, this is a tobacco stringing stand. So, what you would do is your tobacco stick would sit in there like that. You start your tobacco here, and you would tie it. Now, I don't know how to tie a tobacco that way. I've watched several people do it. I don't have a clue how to do it. And then once you get out here, you I guess you would flip it around and start again right there and bring it to the middle, but you would want to leave just enough on each end so that it could hang up in your tobacco barn on your cure poles. Um, but anyways, that's what this was used for. And uh, that's another piece of history, especially for around here that played a major role 
and Stokes County's history for, well, North Carolina's history, really, for a long, long time. And I guess probably Southern Virginia. I think they, they were big in the vodka too. But you know, this would have probably been, a stand like this would have been at everybody's house mm -hmm. because every single person around here many years ago grew, grew tobacco. If they didn't grow but just a couple acres, they had a patch of tobacco. Um, so obviously that's something we're going to definitely hang on to. I'm sure yeah. Grandpa made it. I was going to say, your papa built that. I'm, I'm sure he did. I really don't know, but I would think so. So I think we're going to hang on to that for sure. Um, there's no way I would let this go. But you want to show them the creepy little stroller? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mama told us up here the other day that Grandpa actually used this for one of us, either me. It was probably me. Said I somebody gave it to him or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that thing is old. That had to be from 60s, 70s maybe. I'd say 60s just from the looks of it. But, I mean, that's about as plain and simple as a little, well, I guess it'd be a stroller, but a... It's like a walker. Yeah, a walker, there you go. That's about as plain and simple as one can get. So I don't know, this piece is, it's interesting too, so I think we're gonna hang on to it, and it can at least hang up on the wall, and some point in time we can talk about it. We did find a bunch of these tobacco pegs, that's what you would peg into the ground. I think I've already mentioned that earlier in the video. But then this one, I actually remember Grandpa using that one because it had that hook on it. We found it later on. It had that hook, and it's, that's nothing but a tree limb that he cut and sort of whittled out into it. So it's not like something you would have bought anywhere. It's just you took a piece of wood and sharpened the end of it and made a peg with it. Now this is something else that I honestly can't remember if I picked this up somewhere or another or if this was Grandpa's. But this is a cedar. You flip that up, pour your seed down in there, and you would push it on the ground and they drop out the bottom just like a modern day drop cedar. They would come out those holes right there. And uh, like I said, I don't remember if that's something, if I picked that up somewhere or another along the way, I kind of think I did. Or if Grandpa had that. But I thought that was pretty interesting too. So that would mean you could use that doing like a salad patch or something, or even your plant beds when they were planting plant beds for tobacco plants. That would have worked good. But that's definitely something that's gonna hang around here for a long time too. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm falling around here. But I guess that's gonna be it for this video, isn't it? Yep, I think so. So if we keep on with it, and I hope we do, because our long-term goal here is we want this cleaned out and fixed, the floor fixed, so I can have sort of like a, a workshop to, to work on things and, you know, keep my stuff. Right now, I don't have a good place to keep my tools and stuff like that. And eventually, we got long-term plans of adding on to the backside and everything back here, but, you know, that's far out right now. But our main goal right now is to get this floor fixed and get this building in really good shape. Once the floor is fixed, we are going to have to put some tin on the top, some new tin on top. But um, once we do that, I think we're going to have us a pretty good place to work out of right here. So anyways, y'all let us know what you think. Tell us about, uh, well, tell us if we're crazy for trying to fix this building or not. But um. I guess that's going to be it for today's video. And uh, I guess we'll catch y'all on the next one. Have a good one. Y'all have a good one.